Hey everybody, we are talking about the disorders of the male reproductive system. So let's jump right in. This first one is called balanitis. This is swelling or inflammation of the gland's penis. So this occurs when a male is not circumcised and they're not retracting the foreskin and cleaning under that. Um, so it is related to hygiene. Um, there also may be some autoimmune disorders or diabetes and things that are causing more of this issue, um, but a lot of times it's just not retracting the foreskin enough and not having enough hygiene in that area that causes that swelling and inflammation. Next would be benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH for short. This is caused by an enlargement of the prostate gland, not due to infection. So this just means that the prostate is becoming enlarged and it's more common in our older male patients, those over 50. This becomes a problem because you'll see this picture here. This is what a normal prostate should look like. And you'll notice that the urethra runs, you know, from the bladder down and out through the penis here. And when it becomes enlarged, the prostate actually starts pushing in on that urethra um, or that ureter. And so it becomes more difficult for them to expel urine um, because of this pressure. Um, or sometimes they're unable to completely empty their bladder due to that. All right, um, oh, one other thing about PPH is that sometimes um, if it's bad enough, they will have to do what's called a TERP procedure and they're resecting the prostate that way um, so that they can bypass it and um, have a nice clear passageway for the ure urethra. Next, we're gonna talk about cryptocortism. This is when there is a lack of descent from one or both of the testicles. And actually three to 5% of male babies are born with cryptocortism. And usually it resolves itself by about one years of age where the testicles actually descend. Epididymis is the inflammation of the epididymis and it can cause um, be caused by various factors. Usually it's a bacterial infection, but it can also be caused by STDs or different types of sexual abuse. Um, it causes pain in the groin, the testicular area, flank, or even abdomen pain. Um, you can have a fever and discharge from the penis and blood in the urine. There may be scrotal pain and swelling as well. And if it is a bacteri bacterial cause, it will be needed to be treated with antibiotics. And you can see here that epididymis is located here in the testicle. And so you can see a normal epididymis and then the inflamed, irritated epididymis. All right, next is erectile dysfunction. And you guys may have heard of this one before, also known as ED or impotence. This is when a man is unable to achieve or sustain an erection um, during sexual intercourse. This is not normal at any age, um, and it's usually characterized by the inability to achieve an erection for more or more than 50% of the, of the time. Um, and that's generally when they suggest seeking treatment. So treatment is based on the cause because there are different causes for erectile dysfunctions. Sometimes it's more psychological, maybe it's stress, anxiety, depression. Sometimes it's due to certain medications that the patient may be on. It may be due to different conditions like multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, um, atherosclerosis, different nerve diseases. So understanding what's causing the ED and then treating it based on that. Hypogonadism, this is failure to produce the adequate amount of testosterone, sperm, sperm, or both. Um, so it's normal with aging for those sperm and testo testo testosterone counts to decrease. Um, so it's only going to be treated if it's affecting fertility. Um, so you can have testo tes testosterone replacement therapy. All right, hypospadias and epispadias. This is a birth defect and um, it occurs when the opening of the urethra is not located on the tip of the penis. So it's either gonna be located on the bottom of the penis. We have a picture here showing you that. So the opening is actually down here. That's hypospadias, or it can be on the top side and it's called epispadias. All right, male infertility. So females can have fertility issues just like males can. So um, if 
a couple is trying to conceive, it will be important to test both the female and the male for fertility issue problems. Um, so trying to figure out that source, maybe it's their sperm count levels, um, maybe it's not necessarily the number of sperm, but the quality of the sperm um, and all of that. So they'll do some testing and maybe related to an unknown STD. Um, so they'll do testing to see what that infertility issue is. Orchitis, this is gonna be inflammation of one or um, both of the testicles. Most common causes are bacterial infections, can be viral um, like the mumps. S uh, sometimes it is um, caused by an STD like gonorrhea or chlamydia. It causes pain, it can cause infertility. Um, you're gonna treat it with antibiotics and um, or vi antiviral meds depending on the cause um, to reduce this orchitis. All right, let's talk about a few more disorders here. So with any part of your body, you can still um, get cancer in your penis. Um, so it's actually more of an increased risk for those that are uncircumcised to actually have um, penile cancer. But it's important um, to notify your doctor um, if you notice any changes to your penis um, and not, not to delay treatment. And of course, with just like other cancers, there's chemo, radiation, and surgery, which can all be treatment options for penile cancer. Pyrone disease, this is curvature of the penis during erection. Um, it occurs due to fibrous tissue that's present, um, and you can have treatments such as um, injections um, into the tissue, radiation, different vitamin supplements, and um, in very severe cases, they'll even do surgery. Thymosis, this is tightening of the foreskins so as not to allow um, retraction of the foreskin. This is more common in our pediatric population, um, but they'll try um, steroid applications, manual manipulation with lubrication, or they may even have to do a slight incision um, around the foreskin to relieve that tension depending on the severity. Priapism, this is an extended um, erection, but it has to be um, interfering with normal blood flow. So this can occur due to sickle cell disease or drugs that enhance sexual performance. And it is, um, it can be uh, kind of an emergency if you're unable to um, stop the erection. So you can, try, you can try applying ice packs or increasing your physical activity because you want the blood flow and the blood supply to go elsewhere besides the penis. All right, prostate cancer. This is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in men over 75, um, and there are now better outcomes due to better screening tests like PSA um, and a digital rectal, rectal exam done by providers. Um, so those are kind of added in as you age in those annual physicals that you get. But just like other cancers, as I mentioned, you may have radiation or chemo, or they may completely remove the prostate. Um, and prostate cancer can cause similar symptoms to BPH, that, um, that uh, condition we talked about previously. Um, so just knowing to get checked out, to be screened, so important for all kinds of cancer prevention. Testicular cancer. Testicular cancer um, affects mainly men ages 15 to 40, guys. That's y'all's age range. Um, so early detection is super important. You can do at home um, testicular cancer screenings. They need to be done once a month to make sure there are no new lumps or anything like that in the testicles. Um, diagnosis is made by ultrasound or other radiological testing, biopsy, biopsies and blood testing for tumor markers. Um, the treatment of choice for testicular cancer is, um, is actually removal um, of the testicles um, depending on the staging and the severity, of course. Testicular torsion, um, you'll see testicles are suspended by a spermatic cord. If that cord becomes twisted, um, this is called testicular torsion. It's common in males um, at the younger ages and it is an emergency. Um, it can occur because of different physical activities or sometimes even without any type of um, evident reason for it to occur. It's going to cause a lot of pain. Um, it may or may not um, also have some swelling associated to it. Um, the patient may be nauseated, may vomit. Um, 
It's diagnosed by manual exam by the provider. They may also do an ultrasound to assess the blood flow of the testicle. Um, and then the most common treatment is going to be surgery to release the torsion and to secure um, the testicle back in place to prevent it from happening again. The last one here is testicular trauma. Um, if the scrotum is still intact, they're going to um, treat it with scrotal support, um, decreasing the inflammation, so maybe giving um, ice, anti-inflammatories, and um, having the patient be on bed rest for a little while. Um, if there's been interruption of the skin, so um, perhaps there's a laceration to the scrotum, um, emergency treatment would be needed, um, and they may even have to do surgical intervention depending on the severity again. So guys, these are some common male reproductive system disorders, so be sure to be familiar with these um, and thinking through our male patients as we take care of all of our patients in the clinical setting.